If you Google the term modern data stack, chances are that you'll come across some diagram like this. In 2020 and 2021, the term modern data stack or MDS was all the rage in the data space and also the VC space. Ever since Snowflake set the record as the largest software IPO ever, literally hundreds of VC backed startups have been trying to find the next big thing to latch on to this data revolution. And data has become one of the hottest categories in startups and tech. In 2021 and 2022, the tech bubble was pretty crazy. Anyone starting a data company could go out and raise millions of dollars without potentially having you know, an MVP or revenue or in some ways product market fit. Since then, dozens if not hundreds of companies started to attach this term modern data stack. There's a whole bunch of buzzwords, data observability, data mesh, data catalog, lineage, automatic ETL, data activation. And it's become muddied and muddied with vendors that you know very few people even know what exactly is a modern data stack right now. It just, it just started with vendors like Fivetran, Snowflake, DBT. And now there's there's hundreds of them that are saying they're part of the modern data stack or the solution to, to data cataloging or observability or uh, lineage or anything in the modern data stack. I've personally been a bit guilty of this at high touch. We benefited a lot in the early days from the hype around the modern data stack and attaching to that. It's become less of our business in the in the last year or two, but it was something that we really benefited from in the early days. And in 2023, things have really changed quite a lot. Almost every technology company is not looking to go buy a bunch of tools. They're actually looking to do the opposite, right? Cutting spend, cutting headcount even, lowering overall number of tools that they're using across the stack. And VCs are really holding on to their wallets tighter than ever. Now, here's a great example. And, it, and it's actually the thing that made me start making a video around this. Recently, I was listening to Gong recordings. Gong is this tool we use at our startup to you know, listen into what's actually going on in sales calls and understand how customers are talking to us. And a customer quote, really stuck out to me. It was it was a data engineering leader and it went something like this. Basically they were saying, hey, you have to realize that not every company is California based, you know, Silicon Valley based company that has a modern data stack that's using all the greatest stuff like DBT and Fivetran. The rest of us are out here dealing with you know, Teradata in a typical traditional data warehouse environment and still generating millions of, of revenue. Candidly, you know, this person has a point. If you look at the Google search trends, modern data stack was, was blowing up, but it's, it's not quite anymore. Every enterprise organization wants this sort of perfect data architecture and perfect modern data stack, but it's not gonna happen. They need to find tools that actually solve the biggest problem that they have right now as a business that's preventing some sort of business ROI that's really urgent and needs to be prioritized and not just solve every problem across the technology stack. This really clicked for me a few years ago when I was talking to the chief data officer of actually a Fortune 500 company. I was asking them, hey, I see that you know, you're know you spending a lot of time building data engineering pipelines, building ETL pipelines to get data from all these different data sources into the warehouse. And I asked them, why don't you take this work off the team and implement something like Fivetran that can really streamline this process for them? And I think in the long-term perspective, this company probably will adopt something like Fivetran, but their reaction was actually very insightful. It was that, look, we've actually been building these ETL pipelines for a while and we could bring something like Fivetran in. It would definitely, you know, reduce the maintenance burden that it puts on our team. And it might be something we might want to look at in the future. But right now, we need to prioritize something else, which is actually figuring out how to deliver value with all the data that we have in our Snowflake to our marketing initiatives, to our advertising initiatives, to our business initiatives around the company. And that's why we're talking to you guys at High Touch to figure out how to activate the data in our Snowflake, even if it's not perfect. And even if we don't have, you know, all these out of the box ETL connectors with tools like Fivetran or best in class transformation with tools like DBT. And that is exactly the type of thinking that I think every enterprise organization or fast growing startup needs to adopt when it comes to the modern data stack. The reality is that most companies don't have a quote unquote modern data stack and data teams and technology departments as a whole shouldn't be measured by how cool their technology is or how modern it is. They should be measured by the tangible impact that they make on the business and by how well they prioritize the top problem that's blocking the business right now. So what do I think about modern data stack as a, as a term? Well, I do think it's a valuable term to describe companies that have moved to a generally modern data stack like Snowflake or Databricks or Google BigQuery and are, you know, leveraging modern tactics like ELT or being able to use SQL to do transformations instead of having to manage those all in the ETL pipelines, which can be quite cumbersome on your data team. The part that I don't think makes sense is that 
having a modern data stack means you're activating all your data with high touch or having a modern data stack means you have automatic observability across of it, all of it. I actually don't think those types of mindsets or ways of looking things is productive for data teams. In the end, it's all about cutting through the noise and figuring out what actually matters for your business, not implementing tech for tech's sake. And that's what differentiates great technologists and companies.